Ettore Scola is one of Italy's best-known film directors of the past 50 years. Much of the 78-year-old's work reflects life in post-war Italy and during the economic boom of the 60s and 70s. He's a two-time prize winner at Cannes and has received Oscar nominations. He spoke to Euronews about the state of European cinema and European politics. Mio marito con me non parla. Ordine. Di giorno e di notte. Erano tempi duri, ma noi eravamo poveri ma felici, come dicono i ricchi. Ah? <laughs> A lot of your films tell stories based on important historic events, a special day and unfair competition. If you were to write a screenplay today, what contemporary event would be the subject? Well, Italy, above all, has never been stingy to its authors. It's always been a rich source of inspiration, stories and subjects. It's far from being an unremarkable, neutral society. There are lots of imperfections, negative values. I think today I would make a film about the economic crisis and also the recent earthquake which wasn't just about an event of nature, but also concerned bad public management, unscrupulous builders and inspectors. So there are interesting subjects to make films about. Recently you said, while Berlusconi's in power, I won't make films. In fact, but wouldn't the opposite be better, to express your ideas when you can't share in the culture of the ruling class? Unfortunately, cinema is not like the work of a writer or painter who can say what he likes without worrying about external financial support. All they need is a canvas or a blank page. Cinema is also an industrial endeavour. Among other things, Berlusconi controls the press and TV. Even cinema, to a large extent, depends on him. Now, bear in mind, I'm not so presumptuous as to think Ah, my voice must continue to cry out because it's necessary and indispensable. I prefer to let young people do it. They will do it. They've already started doing it. I'm keeping an eye on a lot of young people, my former assistants. It's up to them now. You've spoken several times about a film on the drawing board called, if I remember correctly, A Dragon-Shaped Cloud. Gerard Depardieu was reportedly interested. Will we see this film? No. It was just a film that we planned to do with Gerard Depardieu. Everything was agreed, the screenplay was done, it was beautiful. Everything was in place, but the financing would have to come from Berlusconi. And so, I think to be able to work in whatever job, even a carpenter must have a rapport with his client. He needs to feel part of a creative family. So to work with someone you're against, I don't think it would go very well in the end. You've always been involved in politics. You were culture minister in a communist shadow cabinet. Do you believe in European integration? Have you always believed? Do you still have faith in Europe? What would our continent be today without the EU? Even if there are contrasts, I think that without the European links, without the single currency, there would be an end to Europe. 
forse sarebbe già, già finita, già... Ogni paese avrebbe pagato le the countries would no? pay the highest price. E infatti, uh, And in fact, the European Union, Union is in the process of growing because countries che, still believe eh, that to advance we have to go forward together. Il cinema può influenzare la politica. Can cinema influence politics? I'm thinking, for example, of the film The Cayman by Nanni Moretti, but also Welcome, which recently sparked a big debate in France. I don't think cinema can transform reality or modify what takes place. I don't think either that it can easily influence politics. However, cinema really can be, and this is an important tool, a stimulator in the minds of those watching films. I mean, film can pose questions to the public that they would not otherwise ask themselves. Film can instill doubts that the public would not otherwise have. So this function of cinema, which I know all too well, can modify mindsets. Io credo che in questo senso modifichi, si possa modificare la mentalità. Cosa fa più male? What's doing most harm to cinema today? TV, video piracy or just bad films? O forse i cattivi film? Ma sempre i cattivi film fanno un cattivo servizio. There are always bad films which have done nothing for cinema. Forse anche Maybe also the reluctance of young directors to make films about their own countries. They focus rather on autobiography or the imitation of other cultures and languages. And so they try to make films that will work for television because TV helps to produce films. But it has to be said, things have turned around a bit in recent years, especially in Italy. I think directors have rediscovered a desire to reflect Italy. In films like Il Divo and Comora and others, the face of Italy is coming through in cinema. At the last Oscars, Slumdog Millionaire was a big hit. It could perhaps be defined as part of a new generation of film. It was produced by Europeans, but was an Indian story. It was perhaps a case of the globalization of cinema, or filmmaking culture. Do you think there are risks involved in this phenomenon? There are inherent risks in globalization. Globalization could have noble or useful objectives. A better distribution of wealth and responsibilities, for example. On the other hand, it could reinforce a standardization or maintain certain differences in the distribution of wealth from one country to another. Durata ancora di certe differenze di distribuzione di ricchezze, un paese diverso dall'altro. It would be difficult to call Slumdog a real Indian film. It's a film which tells an Indian story with Indian characters but with a European Anglo-Saxon culture. In this case, I think this kind of operation worked well, but I don't believe it's a mirror of a specific culture. Have you seen any films recently that you would recommend, that you like a lot? Unfortunately, it was an American film. The films of Clint Eastwood get better all the time. At least the last four, which were really well directed. So it was Gran Torino. Gran Torino. More for the interpretation of the theme, because as an actor, he's a bit wooden. He has a natural authority as a director. The atmosphere he creates, the ambience, the use of light for psychological effect. In that respect, he's top rate. He's great. Grazie. Grazie a lei.